I'm Chuy Valencia, 25 years old, as of uh, Tuesday. <laughs> Chef and owner of Chilan Balam, and it, this is this is what I do. This is this is me. It's a, it's a squash blossom gordita. Infamous flea market. Winky Dink camera. Oh my. God. What's up, Chicago? We're almost in. We're almost in April. We're almost in April. It's still like 30 degrees. Not too fun. But this kind of stuff keeps you warm. Some of that good old stewed tripe meat. <sighs> Yummy. Mm, it's really good stuff. What the warache again? Sandal. Sandal. <laughs> Nobody's digging into the pambasu yet. With a caramelized light onion. And then we did this grapefruit escabeche, like a brothy, vinegary kind of sauce that went with it. A baby mosh and grapefruit fennel salad. Beautiful stuff. A very, very refined vegetarian dish. I really did enjoy making that. I take like these kind of elements of like street food or sort of like little, mm, or kind of just like a very rustic home style food and turn it into something a little bit more approachable. Because they're like Mexicans, you know, we, we don't throw anything away. Uh, Healthy. No, 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 no. Were you? Oh, okay. Sí? Pero de padre mexicano, ¿no? Claro, sí. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, cream and sugar? Yes. Yes? Okay, okay. It's like pig's ears and uh, beef tripe, those things. So we tried to uh, make them, I guess, a little bit more approachable. You know? About to get the Mexican really on right now. We got wasandle, quelites. Look at those guys, little sour guavas. Want some more of the water? Yes, take more bread. Excuse me. Yeah. What's up, Mr. Kunsa? Give me. Este, voy a querer unos, unos cinco manojos de water. I cooked mostly Italian, French, really kind of wine country restaurants growing up in Sonoma uh, region and you know in Sonoma and, and in San Francisco there's like a little bit more of like a higher end kind of a fancier restaurant and I was more used to that kind of thing but anywhere that I've lived I've always enjoyed things like this like the flea market or uh, going and getting dim sum in the Chinese neighborhood going and getting shawarma. There's the Sears Tower. You know, which is great, it's like anybody can come and enjoy this thing, but they just they just don't know it's here, it's under their noses. They don't know it's here, it's under their noses. It'll be my job to show everybody what they're missing. Why did you open up Chilam Balam? I was unemployed. I was unemployed, I had some, some money, and then it was either between doing that or just going back to California. So I was starting to miss home a little bit, and I still am a little bit homesick, but I just like felt like I really didn't have much of a reason to stay here if it wasn't, you know, being in a restaurant. I mean, I'd gotten laid off the job before that. The winter wasn't going so well, and then uh, we opened Chilam Balam in about it was nine months from the time I was unemployed. So it happened pretty, it happened really quickly, just sort of out of nowhere. We opened that restaurant in like under two months total, and, but I still find time to smell the flowers. The media, how it's able to reach so many people. I mean, I could meet all these chefs that I've always wanted to meet and learn from, and maybe I could even tour around and uh, give demos or speeches to like other culinary students who want to do what I do. Or I mean, just to even get a free meal in another restaurant that I probably can't aford on my own right now. You like coaches corn fungus. Corn because corn grows like this kind of right. It's got like this uh, sort of ear. Ear of corn, and you know the, the little the little hairs stick out on the top like this. You know the little threads, and when there's a spore present in the cornfield, when it gets really humid, the little <laughs> I'm doing my little figure again. Uh -huh. The corn ear, ear of corn, and then the little hairs receive the spore, and it infects the kernel, and then blows it up into a big mushroom. It's actually, it looks disgusting. He's right, but it's really tasty stuff. Uh, cactus coleslaw because that sounds good and people are willing to try it because it has coleslaw in the name, right? You kind of catch my drift a little bit here. 
<laughs> You're just looking at me like, mm hmm. <laughs> that sounds gross. Cactus, cactus coals, coleslaw. Okay, but it's an idea. Mayonnaise and cactus. Maybe it's not mayonnaise. Maybe it's like a vinegary sort of South Carolina style slaw. You're from the South Fork, you know. If I was making fun of my demographics, I'd be making fun of these people, and I can. You're just so beautiful. Yes. I'm inquiring on her dinner activities, her plans for later for those things. What you want? What you want on the Sunday after church? You've been talking about God all day. All you want is to indulge on ribs. Four ribs. Excuse me. Yeah. That means five bundles. You might not get the candy from this one. I fell on this stuff when I was a kid. That means nine. So what are we going to do here, Chewy? Um, I'm going to make a special for the restaurant. I want to make a... Let's get, let's get this. There are these pods that grow on this tree called... Well, the tree is called the guaca tree. It's named because... They have these little seeds in here called blackness. And you could dry these out and the seed will dry out too. And it becomes almost like a it kind of becomes sort of like a lentil-ish kind of thing. It's not as starchy though, it's more like a it's, it's a seed. Mm. Mm. It's really good. Like this, what they do is they dice white onion really fine, a little squirt of lime, and uh, a lot of chopped serrano chili, and people just eat them while they're drinking before like a meal comes. Okay is why they call Oaxaca, Oaxaca. Oaxaca's name in the, in the indigenous Zapotec language means land of the Oaxacas. As uh, other states in Mexico also bear the same kind of uh, indigenous name because of something that grew a lot there or, or the people who live there. Yeah. There are some Spanish named states, but a lot of them have those uh, strictly really big indigenous Mexican words attached to them. They mean different things based on the region. So. Uh, I don't know, I, I just, I, I saw these things and I got excited because they're fresh still. So I want to do some kind of like little salad kind of component to another dish and then, and then I bought some of these greens right here. Lettuce, or no, lamb's quarters, sorry. They call them lamb's quarters here in America. And it's a really tender, almost spinach-like, almost like a spinach-like kind of herb, herby plant thing. They have a definite flavor to them. They're almost like a little bit citrusy and kind of a, uh, like heavy on the iron flavor too. It's like an intense, intense, like sour spinach. Um, but in the way I like them, I just like scrambling with a little bit of egg. And then we do, uh, well my mom, who I miss, she's not dead or anything, just not here in Chicago. Uh, we scramble it with egg so it gets kind of like, it's, it sticks to the egg a little bit. And then we do this like really garlicky, red chili broth, tortillas in the morning. Okay, it's all packing up now. So I think we should roll before we're the only two weirdos here. Nice day, a little cold, but it's a nice day. Ah, uh, child labor. The, the weirdest people stop me in the street and want to talk to me. Or follow me in the Mars. Just catch the bus somewhere around Chia. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come come and go. Come and go. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa!